Hi guys, um, so I'm recording a few videos about um, canonical forms to kind of make up for this missed class. So, um, after this, maybe one, also I want to maybe record some with, um, with some examples, but we'll see. Okay, so... So let's just re remind ourselves of a few um, definitions. What does it mean for a subspace to be T invariant? So T is a linear transformation, use a subspace of V, and we say U is T invariant, that just means that T of U is contained in U. Or in other words, T of little U is in U for all U. Okay. And what we saw is that if you decompose V as a direct sum of U and W, both are T invariant subspaces, then the matrix of T is like a, like a block diagonal matrix A and B, or we might write it as A plus B, as, as, to use that notation, um, where A is the matrix of T when you restrict to U, and B is the matrix of T when you restrict to W. And of course, you're like, the basis used to compute the matrix has to like match up with the basis used for U and W. Okay. Um, just so we know like some different invariant subspaces. We have the zero subspace is uh, invariant. Uh, the V is invariant. So the entire subspace is of course invariant, but also the kernel of T is invariant and the range of T is a T invariant subspace. But not only that, um, if you take G to be any polynomial, then the kernel of G of T is T invariant, and the range of G of T is, v is T invariant. Okay. And actually I can, um, you know, anyways, so that's a few different examples. Okay, and what we want to do is um, whatever T we have, we want to break up V into T invariant subspaces in a kind of nice way. And our first uh, stop is to prove this lemma. Okay, so um, this lemma says if you have a linear operator on a polynomial F such that F of T equals zero, and a factorization for f into g and h, where the GCD of g and h is 1, then v is actually the direct sum kernel of g of t plus kernel of h of t. Okay. Let's prove this. Okay. So because the GCD of g and h is 1, what that implies is that... Um, What does that imply? It implies that you can write 1 as a times g plus b times h for some polynomials a and b. And k is like going to be the scalar field of v. Okay, And this is just by doing the Euclidean algorithm on g and h. Okay. Um, let's not worry about it too much. Okay, and what does this mean? Well, that means that, um, so these are polynomials, but if I plug in T for X, I get an equation of linear operators. So I, I get the equation, identity equals A of T times G of T plus B of T times H of T. Okay. And now this is a linear operator, so we can plug in V on both sides, and we'll, 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 what happens? So if I plug in V on the left-hand side, I just get V. So this is true for all V, for all vectors V. I get V is equal to um, A of T, G of T of V plus B of T h of t of v. Okay, and that's true for all v. Now, wouldn't it be nice if um, 
H, if I apply, if this was in the kernel of H of T, wouldn't it also be nice if this is in the kernel of G of T? But it is. Okay, so let's establish that. Well, I guess we should, uh, we want it, we should re just switch the order first. So we want this to be in the kernel of g of t, we want this to be in the kernel of h of t, and that will establish that um, any vector in v is the sum of something in the kernel of g of t plus something in the kernel of h of t. Okay, so let's call this first vector, let's call it um, maybe v sub g, let's call the second vector v sub h. Oops. Now notice what happens when I do g of t times vg, or g of t of vg. Well, I get, I just get b of t, or sorry, I get g of t, b of t, h of t of v. But these are just polynomials, so they commute, so this is really, I can rewrite this as b of t times g of t times h of t of v. And now um, g times h is just f, so this is really h b of t times f of t, and whoops, f of t is 0. So since f of x is 0, if I plug in t for x, I still get 0. Or no, 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 sorry, that's not true, f of x is not 0. But when I plug in t to f, I get 0, for example, maybe f was the, minim was the um, sorry, characteristic polynomial. Okay, so I get 0, I get b of t times 0 of v. In, in other words, I just get the 0 vector. Okay, it, telling us that vg is in the kernel of g of t. Okay, similarly, just the same, same argument tells us that um, h of t of vh is 0, telling us that vh is in the kernel of h of t. Okay, so that implies that any vector v is the sum of something in the kernel of g, g of t, plus something in the kernel of h of t, and so the, the sum of the two subspaces of v, is v, but we also want to show that it's a direct sum. So let's take a vector that's in both kernel of g of t and kernel of h of t. So let's suppose um, let's suppose v is in the kernel of g of t intersect the kernel of h of t. Okay. Well, we have this equation. We can rewrite v, whatever it is, as b of t, h of t of v, plus a of t, g of t of v. But g of t of v is 0, because v is in the kernel of g of t, so that's 0. And h of t of v is 0, since v is in the kernel of h of t. So then 0 plus 0 is 0. So anything that's in the intersection of these two kernels is 0, so their intersection is 0. And that's what we need to establish that this sum is a direct sum. Okay. That proves the lemma. So, as an example, let's just do a very uh, simplistic example okay, to kind of see what this gives us. Let's suppose um, let's suppose uh, t minus one times t minus two equals zero. And in our example, we're going to prove that t is diagonalizable. And we'll see what, 
what all this stuff has to do with diagonalizability in this example, right? So solution. So what do we do? Well, um, we have to take we have to take this polynomial. So we'll our polynomial f is just going to be x minus one times x minus two, and h of x is going to be x minus two, g of x is going to be x minus one, and and our lemma tells us that the lemma says that um, oh yeah, and so v t is going from v to v or something. So our lemma says that v is going to be the kernel of t minus 1 plus the kernel of t minus 2. Okay, um, let's go through the lemma and see exactly what it says for f and g and h. Well, um, we can rewrite, uh, like we can actually figure out what a and b are in this like simple case. We can rewrite 1 as a um, negative 1 times x minus 1 plus um, wait I guess I want to have plus 1 here and then negative 1 times h of x okay if I add x minus 1 minus x minus 2 I'll get the x's cancel and then I have minus 1 plus 2 I get 1 okay so in this um, you know uh, in this simple case, we just have the a and b are just like scalars. But if the degrees of h and g were higher, they might these these coefficients might be um, more complicated. And but that's okay. okay. So that tells us that um, the identity is equal to t minus one plus negative one times t minus two. And of course, you can immediately verify you know that t minus 1 minus t minus 2 is just is just the identity right and that tells us that any vector v we can write it as t minus 1 times v plus um, negative 1 times t minus 2 of v okay. and now as uh, you know t minus 1 of v if I apply t minus 2 to that I get f of t times v which is 0 and if I apply t minus one of v, if I apply t minus one to this, I also get zero. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, showing that um, these two subspaces, their sum is v, and and now if v is in the kernel of t minus one, is in both kernels. So, so now if t minus 1 of v equals 0 and also t minus 2 of v equals 0, then, um, so then you can rewrite v as t minus 1 of v plus negative 1 times t minus 2 of v, both of which are 0, so v is 0. Okay, this is proving that v is a direct sum. Okay, now, um, Construct a basis of V just using these two subspaces. Okay, so let's take V1 up to VK, the basis for the kernel of T minus 1, and VK plus 1 up to VN is the basis for a kernel of T minus 2. And what does that mean? Well, it just means like T of VI is so t minus 1 of vi is 0, so t of vi equals vi for i equals 1 to k. And t minus 2 of v, v, vj is 0, so t of vj equals 2vj. Okay, in particular, what is... Um, the matrix of t relative to this, what happens if I stick these two bases together? So the ba the matrix of t, well, it's just um, ones in the diagonal up from one up to k. Okay, so 
followed by twos, and the next from k plus 1 up to n. In other words, I have written t, I found a matrix of t which is in a diagonal. Okay, so I've diagonalized t. And if you want, we can rewrite this as 1 plus 1 plus plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 if you want. Okay. Okay. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of the power of this lemma. Um, you can turn like an equation that T satisfies into some information about um, the structure of the matrix of T. Okay, so in the next video, we'll um, we'll try and uh, relate this to the characteristic polynomial a little bit more.